This video has been brought to you by the Landscape Certified Contractors Association. Due to the membership support, we're able to bring content to each and every one of you. If you have a topic or a product you'd like us to review, or if you want to become a member, visit www.irrigatortech.com and hope to hear from you soon. Enjoy the video. Hello, this is Brandon Burgess with the Irrigator Technical Training School, and today we're going to go over Reduce Pressure Principle Troubleshooting. Okay, to perform a test for our Reduce Pressure Principle Backflow Prevention Assembly, I need my differential pressure gauge, my hoses, and of course my RP to test. So I'm going to go through the steps. First thing we do is notify, identify, inspect, and observe. So we notify the property. We identify the assembly, correct the proper size, manufacturer, serial number. We um, inspect, make sure that no one's tampered with it. Obviously I have some piping here on this unit because this is for Georgia. Then we observe the surrounding area. So I'm going to go ahead and start so we bleed test cocks. Then my four test cocks. I bleed four first. Leave it running. Go ahead and do three, two, followed by one. Now I'm going to go ahead and close one, and two, three, and then eventually four. Make sure all of my knobs are off on my differential pressure gauge. So I'm going to go ahead and hook my red hose, which is my high side, to the high side of my gauge, which is the red side as well. And the high side means the high pressure side. So that's going to go to my number two test cock. To my number two test cock. Before my first check valve, which drops pressure. So then, go ahead and put my green, which is my low side, to the green on my gauge. And to my number three. So I want to open up my number three test cock, which is my low side of my gauge. Open green knob on my gauge. Go ahead and open test cock, test cock number two. Open it up while they're both bleeding. And I go ahead and close my second shutoff valve. Close my red, which is my high side. Close my green, which is my low. So now what I have is my apparent pressure drop across my first check valve. So this indicates how much pressure my number one check valve is holding. We need a minimum of five psi, so we're good here. Now it's time to perform our first test. So my first test that I perform is going to be the opening point of my relief valve. So that needs a discharge with a differential pressure above 2 psi. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a full turn on my red, which is my high side, giving me high pressure to the bottom of the gauge. And I'm going to go ahead and do a quarter turn on my low side. So my gauge should be dropping to the differential pressure. But as you can see, I'm not getting discharged. So here's the troubleshooting. Okay, so now that we've identified that I'm putting high side pressure behind the first check valve to build zone pressure, I'm not getting the reading. That means that I'm putting high pressure in and it's leaving. So there's a leaky number two shutoff valve with downstream demand. So there's one thing we can do to try to fix that. Go ahead and take our high, our bypass. Go ahead and take our 
bypass. Took from the number one test cut to the number four test cut. So what I'm gonna do is try to force high side pressure to close my second test. Cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna force high side pressure from my number one to my number four causing my second check valve to close tightly and able to build my zone pressure and get a relief valve discharge. So I'm going to go ahead, hold the gauge up, I'm going to open test cock one, and now I'm going to open test cock two. There we go. We get discharge from my relief valve at 2.6. So by observing and getting the reading of the discharge, I can actually pass my second check valve as holding tight because I was able to build pressure behind the zone. We would use our apparent pressure as our actual differential pressure across our first check valve to test this open.